know about how to uh, groom your wire hair dots and head and beard. Um, it's it's important that the beard look neat, not too long and bushy, and this shouldn't be all. Come here, Abby. This shouldn't be all out and like this. It should lay down pretty and flat. And it should brush up pretty to the front. You always brush their beard to the front, their mustache. Hers isn't too bad, but it still needs some help. But you want to see this right here. You don't want them to look sad. And all this hair around their eyes and their eyebrows getting too bushy makes them look sad instead of alert. That's the reason why it's important to keep a nice tight face, a nice tight ear. I also don't like to see, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm too picky, but I don't like to see all this fringe. And your ears have got to be nice and tight. See how hers have all this hair? You need to take that down and make it look more leathery. leathery. Uh, all that hair needs to come off. So I'll start by showing you. You never pull in, in front from the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth. That's a given. You're not going to do that. Uh, you leave that alone. Now, you do have to trim some of this because it'll get too bushy. And some of my girls have like little um, swirls around their eyes. And we have to pay close attention to that or it just is very distracting. But you see all this right here? All that's got to come off. It's too much hair on her head. So, what I do is I hold on to her muzzle and I just pull with my knife. Now, you can use your fingers. It takes a longer, but I, you know, if you're still learning and you're not comfortable with the knife, of course, you use your fingers. See how much hair I can get with my fingers? I prefer my knife. And don't be afraid to pull. There's plenty of hair. The trick is to keep your hand moving. Don't spend a whole lot of time in one spot. Now, you'll understand I just ripped her out of a nap. So she's going, what the heck? Mama, why are you doing this? But there's, you want to get this excess hair off. Now, when you're doing this, I pull an ear back and I start getting to the side of the top of the head. And when I get to the eye, come on, Abby. You just hold on to her neck. It doesn't hurt her. And it gives you more control. The big thing is keeping your hand moving. Sometimes beginners, they want to just pick, pick, pick. And that's where you get your holes. Now, there's different schools about eyebrows. Some people like them looking like schnauzers. I personally don't. My dog is not a schnauzer. It's a wire-haired dachshund. And I want them to look alert. They need to have their eyebrows. But... They don't need to be so long and aimed forward, I don't think. Uh, so that's why I don't keep long, long, long eyebrows on my dogs. Now you get the idea about how to pull the head. Sit up, Abby. Now, I want you to notice how I'm taking this hair off the side of her eyes. You want that tight. I'm also taking hair right here on the side of her face. You want that tight. You don't want a big glop of hair right here. And a lot of times you'll have that. So if you look at your girl and you see and right here, see that? 
you want that all to come off. There's no need for it there, and it gives them a much prettier, more finished look. Now, I kind of pull the eyebrow forward and go around it, thinning out that hair. You do want to leave some eyebrow. But, now, you have this little bit right here. It's all according to your dog's face, too, uh, and the shape of its head. Grooming does can hide a lot of uh, faults. It can, uh, if your head is very broad, you can leave a little more hair down the middle and then tighten it a lot on the sides. Gives it a more domed effect uh, where they don't look like their skull is too wide. But you learn all this as you go, just by watching other people's dogs, seeing what you is appealing to your eye. You know, that's one of the reasons why we have all these different types is different looks appeal to different people. Now, I take a look at her. She's starting to look much better across her head. I want to look at her face. I want to make sure that I have pulled all that hair up to her ears. Oh, much nicer. You see in just that little bit how much nicer her head looks now? But see this right here? I'm going to have to pay closer attention to that. And what I do is I pull. You see me pull? I pull to make that tighter. So I can get in there and tighten that up. Already it looks much better. And then I might pull just a little bit here just to make sure I got it. Now you can see that's much prettier there. And all it took was a couple of seconds. Now this is much cleaner, this is much cleaner. Now don't be afraid to pull over their ears. I can't stand those little giblets, those little flyaways that are on their ears. Of course, I'm just a, I may be a nut because I can finish grooming and my dog can walk across the floor the next two days and I'll continue to see things that I wanted to clean up. Now ears are one of the things your dog has hair on its ears and uh, you want to take and trim off all that hair and make it look more leatherly, leather early, however you say that, should be more leather like. And the only way to do that is to strip this hair off. That's one of the first things we do with new puppies. As their coat starts really coming in, uh, babies will get this long fringe around their ears. And that's their first introduction to grooming, to stripping, is I lay them in my lap and I stroke them until they're snoozing and then I start pulling that fringe off. And it's just amazing what a difference that is. Don't forget, there's the back of the ear here, where there's going to be hair. You just want it all to be neat and tight. You, and the more you do this, the less cotton you have. But there's some areas of your dog that's always going to be a little cottony. And I find that this part of their ear always is. And as you know, this is where that line starts, at the bottom of the ear, going to their neck. And you want to make sure you have that nice and tight there. But see this right here? I want to make sure I get that off her ears. I'm just going to do one side of her head so you can get an idea of what we're doing here. Now most dachshunds hate to have their hair pulled on the inside. So I do this very carefully. But that helps their ears lay down flat. 
as well. Don't forget all around the outside of their ear opening, their ear canal. You want it all stripped off. Now, when you start getting around the edges here, you can really pull with your fingers. And it comes off really easy. But you want the whole edge of the ear to be clean. No signs of fuzz or hair going over the edges. Nice and sharp. Anywhere you hold that ear out and you see some hair, you need to pluck it off. Now that's how much hair I've got off of her head and her ear so far, which is a considerable bit because she hasn't been groomed in a couple of months. I've just done a hit and a miss and I promise to do better. But she's showing this weekend, so I'm going to have to really put my mind to it. But I like to do it the week of. Oh, I had promised to show rolling the coat as well. I'll try to get to that before we finish this video. Uh, because I want to finish this one, send it off to you, and then I'll do the legs. Uh, here's the way I normally groom my dog. I start on the top of their head, and I groom the top of their head. Then I move down their neck. Then I do their entire body. I go down the center of their spine first. Then I tend to lay them over on their side. Has anyone showed you how to easily lay your dog over on their side? See how her ear is starting to look nice? Starting to look more leathery. Leathery. Instead of hairy. You can manipulate an ear just about any old way. So do whatever's comfortable for you. Dogs really find this to be quite relaxing. So I won't spend any more time on her ear so you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, I think you get the idea. When it comes to eyebrows, here's what I do. Now, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I take their eyebrows between my two fingers. And once again, you learn to put your thumb under their, head, their chin. I brush it all up. And what I do is I take my thinning shears and I go, I lean them against my fingers and I trim them. Now, also, to be sure that I've got this nice and tight next to their eye, I take the thinning shears, and you're gonna be a little nervous the first few times. If you just lay the thinning shears next to their head in this growth, you, the odds are of nicking them are slim and none. But as you can see now, She's got a prettier eyebrow, and she's much prettier here, so she doesn't look sad anymore. No sadness. Compared to this eye that still has all the hair, which would make her look a little more sad. Now, when it comes to the beard, Abby's in false pregnancy, so she's not in the best of spirits, but she's the hairiest and give you the best idea. Now, you can see this side is laying. And when I blow dry it, I blow dry it forward and I spin my brush under to get rid of these little flyaways. But as you can see, 
this is starting to get a little out of control. So I put it between my fingers and I snip off those thinned out edges. And I try to go uphill. Of course, I always have to look at my work because there's always a little bit I'm going to miss. The beard should lay flat. Stop. And the bottom part, you can, this is what I use this for. I use this just to go down through the beard. It gets dead hair, just like the rest of the body. You don't want it to be thick and bushy. You want it to lay down. Now it's laying down. And the underneath the beard part, I just pull it a few times. And as you can see, now she looks a little neater. Of course, she hasn't been ba uh, dampened and blow dried yet, so that'll make a world of difference. But you can see how much neater she looks already. Now, let's talk about this under her neck. Um, oh, I wanted to show you something else. It's a really neat trick. I don't necessarily say it's for all beginners, but you're doing a good job, so you might want to consider doing it. Put your dog on their side. Lift their upper lip, and there's a fine line here. When you take that fine line of hair off, stop, Abby. Stop. Right next to the skin. Stop. Stop. All the way back to the corner of the mouth. What happens is that makes the beard lay flat too because you don't have that big line of hair underneath your beard, uh, your mustache. So it makes it help lay flat, okay? I hope this is helping. Now, sorry for my back. Let's talk about under here again. Remember I said don't strip down past here, leave a little hair? Because you want this, but what you don't want is a great big, gnarly, fuzzy, clumpy uh, chest. You do want to go in there and use your knife or your fingers and thin it out. You want it to be hair on the chest, but you want it to be neat. Um, and sometimes you might have a little long strand that's abnormally long. Pull it out. But this is the kill. And what you want to do is pull all this forward. You don't want to have a big clump of hair between their legs. You want it to be nice and tight. So just pull it forward. Then when you have them on their side, I kind of get them over their side back area. You can clean it up underneath. Also, you've got two dimples on each side of the breastbone. You want to accentuate those dimples by making sure you get in there and pulling the hair very, very tight into those dimples. That's what makes your breastbone show off. That's what makes this look so pretty when you're looking at it, is that breastbone. That's the reason why you don't want this line having all that excess hair, because that's all people will see is there are these two wings on the side of the neck. What you want to see is nice and tight with these two dimples. Then you want to see a beautiful chest. Don't be afraid. This is called a harness mark. These 
uh, tan lines across their chest. That harness mark needs to be groomed down as well, and it'll split. It'll go this way, and it'll go this way. And it can get fly away. And you want it nice and pretty over their front here. You want it to lay down. See how this is sticking out? I don't want that, so I'm going to pull that. And what I do is I pick up her skin, and I pull the opposite direction. That way, I'm pulling hair. It's easier to get the hair out. Now you can see, I don't have any of those flyaways left. Oh, they do. Voila, no flyaways. But when you're pulling, you're going to pull from under here forward. They don't necessarily like the hair pulled in their armpits because that's a little sensitive area. So you have to be a little more careful. But you can see that looks much neater now. And I've got a nice neck. I've got a nice head and beard. Her ear is, is nice now. Her head is looking much better. Her eyebrows, I take a little of that thick and thicker gel I was telling you about. And I'll just add a little of that to it when I'm uh, grooming her. But I don't like my eyebrows to bend over and lay forward. I want her to look like a dachshund, not a schnauzer. And she can actually be almost ready now. That looks pretty good and we haven't even blown it dry or added any product. Now, the kill, I'll finish with the kill, then I'll come back and do a second video of showing you how to do her legs and how to roll her coat. Her kill is this right here. All of this. She doesn't need a lot of hair here. It's very distracting and uh, you don't want to see a lot of that between her legs. So we come and we pull that. We want to eat this up on the inside of her legs, like right here. Take it easy over their armpits. That's a sensitive area, just like it would be for you and me. But you come all the way down and tighten all that up. The hair on their belly, this keel area, this is her keel. Um, should be fairly tight. Of course, remembering they do have boobs, and she really has boobs right now. I'm trying to dry her out before next weekend. We've been doing cabbage leaves and haven't had much result with that yet. But on here, you can go all the way. Anywhere there's dark hair, you can go all the way down. And clean all that up. What you don't want to see on her underline is a lot of shaggy hair. Now I haven't done her body and normally I would have all that cleaned up when I did her body. But now you can see what I mean. When I look at her sideways, I've got a nice front and a nice head. Her, she doesn't look sad anymore. She looks happy and alert. And once we blow dry her beard and her mustache, she'll look all pretty. And that'll be it for head and mustache and beard and kill.